Hi guys, Alec Pierce, uh, Tech Tips, and uh, today we're going to do what we've been promising for some time, and that is watch a hydro test. Now we've talked quite a bit about uh, visual tests and other things that you have to do to tanks, but uh, the hydro test, in many people's mind anyway, is the real test. There's some debate on that. But anyway, uh, it's, it's academic. A hydro test has to be done every five years in every scuba tank. That's the law. Very simple. Now, let me explain once again, we've touched on this in previous video and previous episodes, that the hydro test is a test of the metal, specifically of the elasticity. And I've explained, and I think I demonstrated one time, that when you have your good old scuba tank empty, you take it to the dive store, and they fill that scuba tank. It stretches a little bit, yeah, measurably. If you put a tape around it before and after, you'd see it's bigger. And then when you let the air out, it shrinks down a little bit. So that constant stretching and shrinking, constant stretching and stretching and, shrink and shrinking, it will actually cause the metal to crystallize over time. Many, many, many times. Scuba tanks are tested for hundreds of thousands of fills. But anyway, uh, and that's what the hydro test does. It tests the metal. So in a hydro test, essentially, just to describe quickly what happens, your hydro test operator takes your favorite scuba tank <laughs> and fills it to 5,000 PSI. That's right, stretches a whole lot. And then he lets the pressure off, it shrinks back down. But because the pressure was much higher than normal, it doesn't always shrink right back to its original size. There's a little bit of permanent stretch. Permanent expansion is what it's called. And the hydro test operator will then compare that permanent expansion, which he can measure, to what it indicates in the government regulations as to what's allowed for that type of cylinder. And if the permanent expansion falls within the limits, your tank is fine. If for some reason the metal has, has gone bad, crystallized, or has some other problem, it may not go back to, to, to that size, that proper size, and it will fail the hydro test. It doesn't happen very often. Most tanks fail visual examinations, not hydro tests. But anyway, there's a brief uh, idea. You've seen me do this before. I've talked about it before. Let's watch what happens. So we have Chris from uh, Simcoe Diving. He's right around here somewhere. And he's going to come out in just a minute. And he's going to start filling a scuba tank. And I'll explain step by step what's going on. Oh, here he is right here. Okay, Chris. So we're going to fill up your scuba tank first. Yep. Yeah, so we've uh, filled this up. So we got this is a scuba tank that we're uh, going to test here. And uh, he's just filled it up with water. And uh, he has a special adapter that goes into that tank. Oh yeah, that's spilling out there. So the scuba tank has to be completely filled with water. One of the things that many divers will ask is, what happens if the tank fails during the test? Well, you know, to be perfectly frank, nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> you may not even know that it failed. And the reason is that the scuba tank is completely filled with water. There's no air spaces, and the test chamber this big jacket here is called a jacket is completely filled with water so there's nothing to expand if it can't expand it can't explode no expansion no explosion so here we go now he's gonna pick the scuba tank up like that and put it down inside the hydro test chamber Oh, you see? I told you, it's full of water too. So right down in there, see the big O-ring? There's a big O-ring around that. That goes down firmly in place. And then we clamp it tightly in place so it can't get out of there. You could build one of these, you know? You had some sheet metal around, and you know, you're good for with, with a bit of soldering. Just like that, just that simple. Now, this is all stabilized, right? The water's all the same temperature. Everything's all sitting there just properly. That's why. In this particular case, uh, Chris, of course, is a government licensed hydro test operator, and the water in the tank and in the jacket has to be the same room temperature, has to be the same and stable. He actually has a big, a big tank upstairs full of water that stays at room temperature all the time because the water coming from the water mains is too cold, and you have to wait for it to wait. How are we doing? Good, good. So we're uh, we're ready to uh, squeeze uh, some of the air out of this tank by uh, pressurizing it. Um, we've got our uh, measuring scale here, so this measures our uh, displaced water. Mm 
Okay. You see what he's talking about with displaced water. The scuba tank is inside the hydro test chamber. When he pressurizes the scuba tank, can you see this, Kevin? When he starts to pressurize the scuba tank, here we go, guys. The pressure in the scuba tank is starting to climb. 1,000 and so on. As he pressurizes the scuba tank, the scuba tank expands. It starts to grow. Well, as the scuba tank starts to grow, the water that's in the hydro test chamber has to go somewhere. It comes out and it goes into here. And Chris is weighing that water so he knows exactly how much water has been displaced. 2,000. Three thousand. This is a, a steel tank. It's a short tank. It's a thirty-seven fifty. Yeah. Is yeah. the test pressure? Yeah. Uh, actually, on this one, it's going to be uh, just over four thousand. Oh, it's a twenty-four hundred. It's a twenty-four hundred. Uh, yeah. I knew the twenty-two yeah. fifties were always thirty-seven fifty. I yeah. remember that from the old days. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, we tested to uh, one point six seven uh, times its working pressure, right. which brings it to just over four thousand psi. Okay. So this is uh, our first um, uh, cycle. We right. call it. Uh, this is basically to stretch the tank a little bit and just to get a little bit of the air out. Right. Uh, we hold it for 30 seconds and uh, then I'll release the pressure. So this one is going to be our... Uh this is the test. We've had a little, cycle. we've had a little stretch, you yeah. might say, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's like doing exercises. You yeah, just stretch first. Just the cylinder up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the real test, guys. Here we go. That's a Haskell booster you're using, or a booster? Yeah. So yeah. that uh, that booster is capable of uh, testing pressures up to ten thousand psi. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you see, you can't see anything happening. The pressure gauge is going up. And, and uh, the water that's being displaced from the uh, uh, hydro test chamber is going into here so that Chris can weigh it and know exactly how much water was displaced. Otherwise, it's kind of boring actually. You got a good book I can look at? Or? Paint you should have a, a video in here with uh, Allie Pierce Tech Tips on. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're getting serious. 3,000. Close. 4,000 psi, you say? Yep. That's what 4, you want? Yep. Just over 4,000. Okay. Oh boy. Your tank is stretched now. <laughs> so we're going to uh, hold that pressure for 30 seconds and. Um, this will drop slightly over 30 seconds, will it? Uh, no, it shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't uh, drop too much if it's holding pressure and you have, we have a good seal in the system. Yeah. So at the moment, it's displacing 76.6 cc's of water. Right. Which represents the re, the number re, uh, which is the. Uh, uh, Rejection, uh, right. expansion, uh, equivalent. Let so, me put that into English. The scuba tank is expanded with 4,000 psi in it and has pushed water out of the hydro test jacket. Chris has trapped the water, that water that is, was pushed out. And now he can measure that water so he knows exactly how much water was pushed out. Now, pressure gauge is going back down. He held it there for 30 seconds, it's going back down. And now, that water that was pushed out was drawn back in. That's correct, yeah. It's drawn back in, sucked back in. So now we take a look down here and we can see how much water is left in here. Not all of it got sucked back in because your tank's a little bit bigger than it used to be. And how much is left over? So we have a 0 0.8 cc's. 0 0.8 cc, so not quite one cc. So the tank, am I right here, the tank now is basically a cubic centimeter bigger than it was. So uh, we have to use a formula to, um, to calculate that it's within specs. Yep. Um, the permanent expansion, which is uh, this number here, the right. 0 0.8 can't represent uh, more than 10% uh, with this particular cylinder, which uh, this oh, won't my be gosh, it won't yeah, be yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, not even one cc. Yeah. Yeah. So if, 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 if somebody came in with an 80 cubic foot tank, when they leave, they have like an 80.1 cubic foot tank. Is that right? And can they keep doing that? <laughs> no, no, 
Well, can they keep doing that until they have a 90? No, no, unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Maybe, maybe for some people in their minds it may, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, uh, using a formula, uh, we calculate the uh, permanent expansion in terms of a percentage, which can't be more than 10% with this particular cylinder. Um, so just let me calculate that. <clears throat> So the permanent expansion on this particular uh, tank is 1.04%. Uh, 1.04, and up to 10% is permissible. Yeah, anything oh, up to wow. 10% so that, with that tank's good. Cylinder. Yep. And that didn't look like a new tank at all. Nope, this is a quite a quite an old uh, cylinder, steel cylinder, a PS, PSC. Yep. Uh, yep. Old pressure cylinder, 2400. Express steel. There you go, that's it. This is just like a good car dealership. After you get your tank serviced, they wash it. <laughs> there you go. That's how simple that is. Now, this particular setup is very sophisticated. It's modern and it's all electronic. Chris is very, very good at doing his job. And so it makes it look quick and simple. I've seen a lot of old systems where they use the glass tubes and the, and the barrettes and so on. It took a lot longer. Uh, probably just as good a job. But that was very simple. There you go. Hydro test, real simple. If somewhere around you, a dive store or a hydro test station, uh, uh, it will allow you to watch, that's kind of fun to watch, just as we've done here. But sometimes that's hard to arrange, so I thought we'd do this for you. How, how a hydro test is done. Now you'll know next time you go in. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.